It's Chris Jenkins. Thank you for tuning in to another show of Behind the Helmet. So today I have the luxury of having Mr. NFL sack leader Mario Addison in the studio. What's going on, man? What's going on, bro? How you doing? How you doing? How you Pretty doing? good. How's it feel when I say NFL sack leader Mario? I know it's only one week, but you yeah. got to celebrate each accomplishment. Well, you know, uh, it's a good start, man. Um, very blessed, man, to be able to have the opportunity, you know, to be leading the lead right now at this moment. So the main thing is, you know, is take it week by week, stay focused, and try to continue doing the same thing you're doing week by week, or even grow a little better. Have you thought about the fact that Mr. J.J. Watt is coming into town and you're tied with him for sacks? You know, everybody talking about, J.J., yeah. J.J., what about Mario? Well, you know, um, I really don't really look at the sacks and all that, because, you know, all that stuff, you go to thinking about it, this and that, then you get distracted by the things you really got to get to come. So, you know, my main thing is getting ready to dominate the guy that's coming to town that I had to play against every play, and it'll be like the left tackle or the right tackle. Mm -hmm. So my main concern is, you know, dominate that guy, get into the quarterback. So I really don't care what they, you know, comparing about me and J.J., me and J.J. Yo, J.J. is a great player. You know, I like the guy. I like his style. I like everything he do. You know, but I'm really concerned about it for real. Yeah, I think it's for you. It's one of those things that you're getting more and more recognized by your peers and coaches, which sometimes players look at as more yeah. valuable. Anyway, I know last year we were in a press conference on a conference call with a coach, and I kind of laughed because he didn't know your name. He just yeah. said, uh, number, number 97, I, I think <laughs> it's Addison or something. You know, we got to yeah. watch out for him as well. So yeah. it's good to see that you're getting that recognition and you're, you're picking up and already got that season leading two sacks. Now, this Sunday, you guys do play against Houston, and yeah. it's looking like that you guys may face them without the captain, or one of your captains, Luke Keekley. I know yeah, right now yeah. he's listed as doubtful. He got one more test tomorrow, but how do you guys do this on defense this Sunday without Luke? Well, um, it's called next man up. You know, um, we prepare for days like this. That's why we got backups. So we got dealt on defense just in case anybody go down. So we ready. You know, we got um, – Still got, you know, TD playing back there. And we got Shaq, Shaq back there doing good. But who's going to replace AJ for this game? I mean, who's going to uh, replace Luke for this game is going to be AJ. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, I got faith in AJ. You know, uh, his preparation been good this week. He been going out there doing his thing. So I have the utmost confidence in AJ and what he's going to do to the game. Now, is that next man up something that coaches really, really instilled in you guys? Because I've heard that so many times, like yeah. next man up, next man up. Is that, do you, was that purposely drilled into you guys' head some kind of way? It, it really just means just be ready at all times. You never know when it's your chance. You know what I'm saying? Really just see AJ, you know, he, he's just like me. He come in, you know, like different plays and go back out. Mm -hmm. But now he get to lead the group, you know, actually just start it off being the one that leading the whole defense. Because the Mike Becker is the one, it's like the quarterback of the defense. Mm -hmm. So he got a lead versus just coming in, you know, different play leading. It. But now he get to start all leading. So that's what I mean by this, man. No, you just got to be prepared at any time. Yeah. When your numbers call, you know, you got to answer. Okay. Now, we, we've all had moments of inspiration. You know, we had these goals as we start out in life. And then we've had moments of inspiration that either helped, we feel like was really pivotal, pivotal in us getting there or something that sticks with us now. Yeah. I know there's probably more than one of those occasions for you, but any thing or few that might just come to your mind towards your inspiration getting to this point? Well, I know all my life, like, um, my first sport growing up was baseball. Okay. You know, I was pretty good. I was better in baseball than I was football. What positions were you playing? Shortstop. Okay. Short and third. But um, I played late in high school, but I chose football over baseball because of the contact. <laughs> and you wanted the yeah, contact. I just liked the contact, so I kind of like veered to football. So, um, you know, I was doing good, whatever. And um, I'm going to skip to college. Um, at Troy, my senior year, you know, I was doing real well, and I broke my hand at defense end spot. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I kind of got discouraged at first, like, oh, man, I broke my hand, this and that, this and that. So, you know, I had a whole lot of teams looking at me, mm -hmm. but they was kind of timid on picking me up because I had broke my left hand. So they thought I was going to play timid because my hand was broke. But I still finished the season with 11 and a half sacks. So I went undrafted. But before I even, you know, went undrafted, I was like, um, I thought I wasn't going to get a chance. Like, period. Just a chance because I had broke my hand. And 
I knew if I ever got that chance to really just show, you know, whatever team I'm on that I can play no matter what. And it wasn't no fear mm -hmm. in me at all because I had, because I was small for one thing and I had, a, you know, a you banged up hand. It was a smaller back then. Back then. <laughs> yeah, I had came in like 245. Okay. 2011. So, you know, Chicago gave me, gave me a chance. Well, a different team wanted me, but I chose Chicago because I was used to like put my hand in the dirt or whatever. So, mm -hmm. they gave me a chance to really just show what I'm about, and I made the team. So that was one one of the times that I can say, you know what I'm saying, that I, I really feel good about. And I think God was just teaching me a lesson to see what I praise him the same way when I was down, mm -hmm. the same way I was up. So, and I did, I continued to praise him the same way when I was had my hand broke yeah. as if my hand wasn't broke. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the times I always talk about, you know, never give up, you know, the worst thing you can do is give up, that means you quit. And I would never was quarter. Okay. Yeah. That's a good one, man. Yeah. <laughs> now we're gonna go into some non football questions right here. And I think this first one, I think our first time I heard this was maybe Kelly Kelly Bardick at Fox asked somebody. So Kelly, if you're watching, I'm still in your question a little bit here. But what song would you come out to doing intros? If you could pick the song that Vin, I think it's Vinny, right? That, that plays the music yeah. for you guys. What song would you guys would you like to come out to? A Tummy Dog. <laughs> tell me dog. Dog. Yeah, by George Clint. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's mainly because uh, I'm a I'm a Q dog. Okay, I'm mega sci-fi. Okay, so uh, that's one of our theme songs. Tell me dog. Yeah, you know we get the hop. You know, so we do all that <laughs> good stuff off of it. So it'll be a tell me dog. Okay, yeah. all right. The bikes and the four wheelers. Talk about it, man. You got you got a. What all do you have, and when did that obsession start? When I was little. Um, I always wanted, you know, like the the dirt bikes, you know, the four wheelers and all that. And at the time, my um, my parents can afford it, mm -hmm. so you know, I, I used to have bicycles. <laughs> and you know, a couple of people around my own community, you know, they had like the uh, go karts and all that, and we can afford them. But I can afford a bike, right? So I was a professional bike rider, <laughs> BMX. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> so and I always wanted. It. So when I got to college, you know, um. I had a couple of teammates who had different, you know what I'm saying, things that I can, you know what I'm saying, ride or whatever. So some had like four wheels, some had mopeds. And I actually owned a moped in college. Okay. So when I finally, and I knew how to ride like dirt bikes and stuff because I knew people who had them and they taught me how to ride clutch. Right. So once I got to the, uh, the league, my uh, rookie year, my uh, my second year, I said, let me let me buy me a four wheeler, you know, a clutch of my own. So my mm -hmm. first ride was a four wheeler a, and I bought the biggest one the, the more powerful one that you can ride <laughs> for I won't have to keep upgrading you're right so hey. I bought a, um, a TRX 700 made by Honda okay so I bought that bike and after that I was like man I like the power <laughs> and I like you know all the stuff you can do with them yeah so then I bought like two more four wheelers one was all the matter for um, like you know my family want to ride with me or whatever so they can ride so then I went to a dirt bike <laughs> I bought me a 250, uh, KX, KXL 250. Uh -huh. So um, I just like it, man. So was that three, three four wheelers and one dirt bike? Four four wheelers, one four. dirt bike. Okay, yeah. get it right, get it right. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, man. Um, but my favorite four wheeler is the TRS 700 that I got customized. Uh huh. And, um, I just ride on the streets though. It's um, the theme uh, is the Joker. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's the Joker. The Joker. I, I love the Joker, man. So that's like my favorite four So that's what got me into it, though. I, mean, I always wanted to, you know, ride when I was young and we uh -huh. didn't have the money. So it's like right now I'm getting to, you know, relive my childhood. Yeah. As a kid, but as a grown <laughs> up, it, you know. Right? Yeah, so. And then what's this I seen about you being in, it seemed like Foot Locker and, and all these other stores. I mean, are you a big mall guy, shopping guy, the shoes? What? What is that? Like, <laughs> I'm not a big shopper, uh -huh. period. You know, I can just wear, re-wear everything that I have, like, as far as clothes. Because uh -huh. I, I really don't outgrow clothes, for real. But I love shoes. Okay. I love shoes. So you'll see me, like, in Foot Locker a lot. Working? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't really work, but I've been there so much that they gave me a shirt to put on. Right. So I'm, like, cool with everybody there. I can just walk in there. You would think I worked there. I can walk in there, <laughs> use their restroom. I can help customers right. and doing this. Or I can get like, suggestions and be like, okay, those shoes look nice on you. The value <laughs> I wear, you know, right. stuff like that. So we always just have fun. And it's another store called Tracks. 
you know, tracks right down the street out of Wilkinson. Uh -huh. um, those people, the only day is Bear. All those people are cool with me too. And I walk in there, you know, I can do the same thing there. <laughs> Everybody's just cool, you know. And so I ran out with both of them stoves. So those, so I called them my shoe connect. Okay. I get my shoes from those two, you know what I'm saying? I play so. All right. So we can go by like them. and drop your name and they, they might take care of us. Yeah, man, they might look out for you, man. <laughs> Say Mario sent you. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go over to, to Periscope now and see what kind of questions we got out there. And, uh, but I'm going to give you the first one here. So how does his, his mentality change, if any, from when he's starting or when he's been a pass rush specialist? Mm, that's a good one. That's, that's a good one. Yeah. Ready? Yeah, oh, I'm ready. Oh, All right. Oh, yeah, I thought you were <laughs> um, You know, I really just, I go in the same way no matter what. I go in knowing that I got a job to do. Mm -hmm. So my same mentality is gonna be the same as if I ain't have number one play. You can you can give me you can give me five plays or you can give me fifty five plays. I'm still gonna have the same mentality that mm -hmm. I got a job to do. I'm here to grow and to learn, you know. So I'm gonna go out there and give my all every play. So my mentality it don't change. It stay the same no matter what. Okay. For those on Periscope, you guys can go ahead and continue to type your questions now because we watching. And uh, next question was, anyone you know in the NFL, a vegan or a planet-based diet? That's, um, <laughs> you know any vegans? No, not right off. But um, I'm sure there's a couple of people in the NFL that's doing it. But um, <laughs> not me. <laughs> Which quarterback would you like to sack the most that's in the NFL? Mm, that's a good question. <laughs> all, all of them twice. Yeah, everybody <laughs> twice. But um, you know, it'll be Peyton Manning. Yeah, I, I like Peyton Manning. Um, growing up, and um, I never got a chance to play against him. But um, hopefully in the near future, it uh, I get a chance to sack him, and that'll be the guy, Peyton Manning, hands down. All right, keep the questions coming, guys, in the hearts. If you like the video, a uh, pre-game routine. Um. For me, you guys, um, I sit down on a chair and I just visualize what I'm going to do in the game. Like, I can see it for a half and I can just see what I do if I was in this situation or that situation. But I have some headphones on, listening to something like T.I., <laughs> Lil Wayne, Lil White, somebody just, that get me crunk. Yo, got it. In the song, <laughs> that get me crunk. My favorite rapper is Jeezy. All right, I don't know if this question is going to get you in trouble or not, but who would you say are the best and worst dressers on the team? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's people just different in their own ways. You know, um, it's That's some, a politically correct answer, right? <laughs> <laughs> people different in their own ways, man. You'll catch a guy, not name calling anyone, but you'll catch a guy with something that's really weird. You'll be like, and we'll talk to somebody and be like, man, what do we have on? <laughs> or you'll see somebody that's real fly and be like, oh, I like that, man. Or you'll ask me, you know what I'm saying? Hey, where you shop at? Where you get your clothes from? So it's different. It'll be something that's, that's weird and somewhere in the middle. Or you'll see somebody that's real fly and you kind of admire what they have on. Uh, first paycheck. I guess, was there any splurges from that first paycheck that you got? I know that first one's a bonus, so they yeah. tell you guys to put that one away. My first paycheck, when I seen it, I was like, wow, <laughs> like I'm hood rich. <laughs> I, grew up, I, I grew up in the hood, you guys. So I looked at it around like, oh, man, I'm hood rich. I got, okay, thank you, Lord. <laughs> First thing I did, man, I, I just prayed, you know, and thanking the Lord for, you know, um, for blessing me. Because, you know, that's a blessing. And what I did with that first check, I put it in the bank. <laughs> I ain't touch it. To this day. It's probably gone now. <laughs> but <laughs> it's gone now, but I did put it in the bank when I first when I first got one. Uh this is an interesting one. I'll kinda answer it for you. Do you ever get recognized in public and how do you feel about it? But before you answer that, I will say that football players, you guys have the toughest yeah. part of getting recognized because during the game you got this big old helmet on, on your face. Yeah. So go ahead and take a take a stab at that one. Uh, some people recognize me a lot. And some don't, but the ones don't, they'll be like, yo, you big, man. Do you like <laughs> play football or basketball? And um, it starts from there. You know, um, I try to tell the truth. 
seven. I know some guys that, you know, that try to lead you a long way. I'm a custodian or, you know, I work for, the, you know, I'm a teacher at such and such or this and that. But no, I tell them the truth. I play, like I say, I play football. And they, and they still ask me, you know what I'm saying, who you play football for? And I tell them. You know, it, it ain't no shame, man. You know, I ain't trying to hide anything. I'm, I'm real, real humble and friendly guy. So I tell them. I mean, um, the people who recognize me, like I was in church um, one day, and the guy uh, sat on the side of me, what's going on, hit stick? I looked around like, hey, what's up, bro? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so he had like his son with me. You know, I shook his son's hand, shook his hand. You know, we talked during church. And, um, you know, that's that. So, you know, it's, it's, it's all, for, we all, we all family at the end of the day. All right, we're going to have to limit it to two more questions because I got to let Mario get back to his routine. But uh, if you weren't playing football, what do you think you might be doing? For me, I'm more of a hands-on guy. I know I'd be – I like cars, and I like, you know, fishing on them here and there. So I know I'd be part of a mechanic, <laughs> someone that, you know, that's hands-on, fixing the motors and stuff. I like fast cars, so I'd be – putting in cams, you know, just everything dealing with motors. And I'd be that type of guy, a mechanic. Could you hear the fans in Jacksonville? Could I hear? Yeah. Yeah, they were talking. <laughs> Could you hear all the Panthers fans down in Jacksonville? I heard all the Panthers fans. <laughs> they were loud in the Jacksonville fans. <laughs> Last one, man. We're going to go out with this one. This, this might be somebody that know you because they said, who did you admire growing up in Alabama? Well... One guy that I really admire coming up in Alabama, it was Ricky Smiley. Ricky Smiley? Yeah. The comedian. The comedian. <laughs> you know, Ricky Smiley from, um, that's one reason why I play as Q Dog too. Yeah. Because it was Ricky Smiley. And he, he was like this funny guy, and he was serious at the same time. And I remember when I approached him when I was like in middle school, and you know, you're young, you know, you really don't think about what you say. So I just walked up to him, because he was visiting my middle school. I walked up to him, I like, hey, what's up, Rick Smile? He like, what's up, man? What's up, young man? How you doing? I like, I'm doing well. Hey man, say something funny. <laughs> so he looked at me, he was like, um, well, you know, man, I only really be funny, man, when I'm on stage. You know, he a real professional about it. He like, I only just be funny when I'm on stage, you know, such and such. But um, we still cool. Like, oh, yeah, man, no doubt, man, we still cool. So after that, you know, um, I, he was just funny, man. I'm, I'm a funny guy. And I yes. like to have fun, so <laughs> he was one one guy that I admire. So he's Rick Smiley. Hey, I got to test to that funniness because before Mario came here, he hit me with a text and said he ain't gonna be able to make it. And so <laughs> you know, I kind of liked the guy. So I was like, mm, what, am I, what am I gonna say to him? Because I, I set up all this equipment, yeah. I'm here by myself, but I got to be professional so that he'll come back when he got time. So yeah, I think I think you got a little comedian in you. How do people? people get in touch with you on social media what all are you on so we can let people know about it um i'm on ig and i'm on um twitter so you can get in touch with me through any one of those and my twitter name is hit stick four h-i-t underscore s-t-i-q four so that's the same for my um twitter and my ig all right so Thank you guys for watching. As always, I invite you to subscribe to our channel. That way, when we get these interviews, you can be notified of them when they get them up. Because sometimes we get these guys like Mario in the locker room, NFL Law, so that can only have it up for 24 hours. So if you subscribe, you'll be able to see that right away. Thank you guys for watching. Leave your comments below in the video. And this is Chris Jenkins along with Mario Addison. Take care.